Okay, continuing the Mimer, uh, the second ois, and I hope everybody got the shuckle fever yesterday from my yeshiva days. So uh, the Mimer continues. Yesterday we ended off that the Mimer asked the question, and true that there is a concept of shtus dikdusha, of folly in a holy way, which represents serving Hashem in, 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 a, in a manner that's above intellect, but why was it specifically that this is expressed by Reb Shmuel, Bar Ilas, sorry, Reb Shmuel, Bar Yitzchok, specifically by a wedding? It seems to indicate that a wedding is specifically connected to a level which is above rational intellect. So the Maimon continues here and says, What is the difference between when you say somebody is walking versus somebody is dancing? So he continues and explains that walking means and represents that somebody is going sort of in an orderly, normal way. Whereas dancing, or which is like jumping, dancing means that somebody is going beyond the norm, not following the normal order of things. And therefore, he continues to explain very beautifully that <coughs> a chasana, a marriage, is continue, has a special connection to that level of relationship to Hashem. As the Gemara says, that ish be ish, says the Maimon. If, if a man and a woman, a husband and wife are meritorious, then the shechina is amongst them, as is indicated by the, by the letter Yud, which in, within ish, and the hey within isha, which together make up the name Yud K, which, as the Maimon explains, is the actual higher part of the full name of Hashem, Yud K Vav K, representing the fact that there's actually a much higher than the norm level, which is part of a marriage of a husband and wife. So the Maimur continues to explain this by being by explaining the bracha, one of the brachas, one of the blessings we say at the Sheva brachas. We say, Samach to Samach Kisam which means that you should bring joy to the loving friends as um, as you brought Simcha to your creation in before the beginning of time, meaning other Marisha, and so he explains it also on a higher level that before meaning over here means before Seder Ishtalshulus, before the order of creation, before meaning higher than the order of cre- creation, that at a chasana what's introduced, the blessing of Mikedem, which represents other Kadmoin, which again is a level which precedes and is above creation. That is what happens at a chasana. And that is why at a chasana we find when we have the bracha. Just back up a second. That's why at a chasana we find that that we say, im <coughs> hakala, that meaning that the kala is actually, eventually the kala reaches a level which is higher than the chasana. In the normal order of way of things, the chasana, the male, is above the kala or above the female but when you reach to a level which is actually beyond that the female is actually on a higher level and she introduces and brings simcha to the chasen because she reaches and is able to draw down from an even higher level which which uh, is why the mimer continues and says which is why you have you had this Reb Shmuel which danced by the chasen since again the chasen represents a level which is Beyond Seder Ishtal Shalos, Reb Shmuel understood that and realized that and drew down that blessing, which is why after he passed away, there was a light, a revelation that separated him from the rest of the world. The Gemara uses that expression because he introduced a light which is separated and much higher and much greater than the rest of the world. And this is the conclusion of this ois, and sorry, just to add one more quick thing, which is why in a chasana we have then the blessing of binyan adeyad, uh, everlasting uh, relationship, and that that is introduced into this wedding because because it's from a level which is beyond time and above time. Therefore, we could bring into this relationship something which is beyond time, which is everlasting, which is expressed more specifically in being benched with gezunta, heleke, and yiddish kindalach.